Good morning, squad. Welcome back to Mad Mizzy Sports Morning Show, presented by Mizzy World Entertainment, the number one spot for everything sports news in the morning. How to show out right now. To bring in episode six, week two of Mad Mizzy Sports Morning Show, I gotta start off with college football. And you know I gotta start in the big house with my boys. Go Blue, what a outing, what a game, what a showing. Um, I'm very interested to see how the J.J. McCarthy versus Cade McNamara um, quarterback competition pans out. But in my opinion, J.J. McCarthy is going to end up winning the job. He's more explosive. He's stronger. He's faster. He just has a very much higher upside, especially if we want to make wave in the college football playoffs and not just in the Big Ten. I'm going to say J.J. McCarthy is going to end up getting his job, even though I'm um, so proud of Cade McNamara for the job he's done when we were down in the doldrums, bringing us back to beat Ohio State. Beautiful. But I'm here to talk about the huge news in Michigan, the huge groundbreaking news. Um, Jim Harbaugh is so progressive as a football coach, as a man. I love him leading our program and the fact that we have the first female graduate assistant coach on our sidelines means the world to me. Shout out to Milan Bolden Morris, our quarterbacks coach at Michigan. Female, I think she balled, she played uh, college basketball somewhere. Crazy athlete, she said, they're saying she's a brilliant mind. She might have a, a future in the NFL, college football, WNBA. Just want to tip my cap to Milan Bolden Morris. What such groundbreaking moves by the Michigan Wolverines makes me a proud fan to be a Michigan Wolverine. But let's move on, man. We all know prime time is down there in Jackson State, but what a shoot, what a outing in their first game this year against FAMU, regardless, FAMU, they ran down on them and Shador Sanders, Deion Sanders' son that plays quarterback had five touchdowns, what an outing. Um, I don't know what his NFL prospect or NFL card is looking like right now, but I love the way he carries himself. He's just a spit, splitting image of how his dad was, how his dad carried himself with such confidence and such aura, such swag. Um, I, I love that out there. But to end off the college football Saturday breakdown, we've seen blowout after blowout. Ohio State versus Notre Dame kind of panned out the way I thought it would with Ohio State kind of figuring out towards the end and pulling away. But I got to say this, and I expected it from Georgia, but golly, Josh, sheesh, bruh. They came out and punched Oregon dead in the mouth, and Oregon ain't do nothing. 49-3, Bo Nix getting smacked around all over the field. Georgia looking like they coming back for a repeat. They coming back for a repeat run, you feel what I'm saying? So it's, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the rest of this college football season pans out, especially in the SEC and the Big Ten with such um, so much on the line. You feel what I'm saying? But let's move on. It's Tuesday. The Tuesday before the Sunday NFL kickoff season is here. We're finally here, folks. We're finally here. And for me, I got to break down what's the most intriguing matchup this Sunday to kick off the 2022 NFL season. I was looking at this Thursday matchup. I'm like, dang, this Rams versus Bills joint about to be crazy. But I also look at it like both of these teams have an opportunity to rebound because I just look at the Rams. They're going to have that opportunity because they're in the NFC. Regardless, I don't think they'll be terrible to where they won't even be like in the in a wild card hunt. You get what I'm saying? Nine times out of ten, they'll probably win our division just because of the, the quarterback situations and DeAndre Hopkins being out so long for the, um, the Arizona Cardinals. But um. Yeah, I, I'm looking at this Raiders-Chargers matchup. I know I look back on the kickoff, the, the NFL season in general, in general, and the Chargers and the Raiders play a lot, but they have a lot on the line this year. And this game, this first game, is going to carry a lot of weight moving forward down the line in that stacked division. Whoever drops this game and the Chargers need it, they went 0-2 against the Raiders last year, lost their opportunity to make the playoffs. To the chart to the Raiders last year, and the Raiders could have let them in. The Raiders could have let them win. The Raiders would have got in. The Chargers would have got in. They said, "Nah, stay on the outside looking in. Watch this. Watch us." You feel what I'm saying? So that's going to be a very intriguing matchup. Devontae Adams, Derek Carr. You feel what I'm saying? Justin Herbert. Everybody over there. 
Khalil Mack coming over. Joey Bosa, how's he going to come out? Derwin James, oh my goodness. That matchup right there, nobody's talking about? Oh, that's going to carry a lot of weight moving down the line, and I think it's going to be a very, very good game. It's a very intriguing game, and I know both of them know that. For it to be a week one matchup, it carries a lot of weight. It carries a lot of weight. Now, before I move on, man, got to get a little somber on y'all, man. My man Rafael Nadal got upset by Francis Tiafo from America. Black dude, congratulations. First time in the U.S. Open semifinals. Tip my cap to him. But I wanted to see my guy come out and go for his third title, third open title this year. I wanted to see Rafael Nadal just come out and beat Rafael, but his serve wasn't right. He looked a little bit older, but it was his serve, the number one thing in his return that just was off. Just was off, but I want to tip my cap to Francis Tiafo and tip my cap to how Serena went out swinging, man. You could tell her legs was absolutely shot in that last set, that last match, match, and she just gave her all. She gave her all and she fought like a champ. She went down like a champ, but that age and attrition of what I thought I, I was so fearful of is what called up to, to me, both of them. You feel what I'm saying? You going up against these young cats, they running all around the court. Once they start to get Serena and, and Rafael moving, they not in that young prime no more. It's like, oh, you know what I'm saying? So it was uh, great to see both of them go out swinging, go out like champs, but uh, tip my cap to both of the people that knocked out two legends because it's not easy, especially with the crowd being against you. Moving on, man. Can, can we talk about this dude, man? Can we talk about Mr. Superheroes Need Help, Mr. Philosopher, Mr. He wants to be a politician and a philosopher more than he wants to be a great basketball player, Kyrie Irving. The dude is super talented on the court. The dude is a crazy asset to the game of basketball. But the dude is not in the same mental capacity of other greats in this game. The, like. When he sits there and he talks about superheroes needing help and he just says quirky stuff, he doesn't realize how it affects people. People not coming into practice to hear your philosophy on how the earth is flat every day, bro, while you still not playing. People don't want to hear you, oh, I don't want to practice, but you in there talking about, well, why are kids, when they go to school at the age of six, they got to go through this, that, and the third. Bro, it's kids that ain't going to school at all in some parts of the world. You get what I'm saying? There's women in Muslim countries, because we both Muslim, Kyrie, that still can't vote. It's a lot bigger stuff out here that you could focus on, but instead you try to simplify it for your fans so they can eat it up. When it's like, if you really wanted to make change, you could. If you really wanted to be a great basketball player, you could. But he stays in that in-between range, and that's what gets to me. It's like, bro, are you a philosopher and a human rights activist, or are you a great basketball player? You can't be in-between. You can't be in between. You get what I'm saying? And he said, what he must have seen my story because I be having this debate about Dame versus Kyrie with everybody. And the one thing I always say is that Dame is a superhero. Kyrie is an assistant. You feel what I'm saying? He's a sidekick. He's a Robin. And he just admitted that. I just tried to help LeBron. Superheroes need help. And then he left to try to be his own superhero. See, it didn't work in Boston. AKD. Can, can, can we link up and I be a sidekick in Brooklyn? Please. You feel know what I'm saying? We're going to get some extra pieces too. So that's where it laid that to me. I just want to see Kyrie Irving invest totally into the game of basketball. See where that lands him. You get what I'm saying? It might add some intrigue or it might show that he's not this super talented person that everybody. Th of course, he's super talented, but he's not the most talented player to ever lace up a pair of basketball sneakers like everybody thinks he is. So. That, that's what I take away from it is this, like he stays on his deep philosophy things and I don't know if he wants to be an activist or a, a basketball player and it affects both of them. It affects both of those stances. You get what I'm saying? I think he burns himself out with everybody with the super hot takes he takes. Just because you have extreme opinions or extreme takes does not make you smart. Does not make you smart. You get what I'm saying? But to end off, Episode 6, um, Tuesday edition, Mad Mizzy Sports Morning Show. I gotta speak about my boy, man. I love this dude. It's boxing wise. This man does not back down from a challenge at all. Tyson 
the Gypsy King Fury, man. This is my guy, man. Yusick called him out. He called this man a middleweight. Then he was just calling out Anthony Joshua this weekend. Talking about if, well, if you want the belt, you can come get my WBC belt. Then you can go for the lineal belt after that. You can We, we can go for the lineal championship after that. I'm like, yo, I love Tyson Fury. He does not sit back and he knocks everybody out. He knocks everybody out. He talks that talk and he come in there. He don't dance around. He don't try to win on points. He tries to give his fans a show and he knocks people out against the stiffest competition in their prime. Period. I love it, man. In the, in the heavyweight division where they need that dude. They need somebody to come out there and talk that talk and back it up. They need that. You know what I'm saying? We need more of... Tyson Fury's in different weight classes, bruh. You feel what I'm saying? We, we need more of that. We need more of Tyson Fury. That's what I'm asking for. You dig what I'm saying? But y'all know what it is, man. Man, Busy Sports Morning Show. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Click the alert button. Listen. Yeah, man. What a weekend. NFL kickoff coming soon. Niners Bay Area. Gang.